I was like, go ahead on, boy! Hey fam, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Robert Anton here, robertanton.com, coming to you with your no-frills American Idol commentary from a singer! Yes, sir! It's back to Hollywood week for the last night and the solo round for those who made it through the notorious group round. Congratulations! For solo round, the contestants have to pick and learn their own song in one night and arrange and perform it with the band. 75 contestants are remaining and we are going down to 50. Let me tell you what happened! Let me tell you what happened! <laughs> So let me tell you guys, this is going to be really like in and out, over and around because there were so many things going through so fast and they had a lot of collages where they had like three, four different people singing stuff and weren't really giving comments. The judges weren't really commenting on the contestants for the contestants to hear. But I did write some of the comments that they were saying like under their breath and they had going across the screen while people were singing or right after they sing while they were walking away. And of course my little comments here and there. We started out with Stephanie DeGretti. She did Set Fire to the Rain by Adele and she had J-Lo singing along with her while Keith gave her a stern look. She really has grown on me since the auditions. I didn't think she was that great in audition, but I liked her tone on this and the way she navigated the notes. Harry said he liked her under his breath, and J-Lo liked that she could walk in a pair of heels. <laughs> Okay. Thomas Stringfellow did A Thousand Years by Christina Perry. Keith said it was a terrible song choice. Avalon Young did One Last Time by Ariana Grande. I didn't really put any notes for her for some reason. Olivia Rox played an original song. It sounded pretty good with an airy quality. Harry said she was right on track. So John Wayne Schultz was up next. He did John 316 by Keith Urban. He didn't wear his cowboy hat and they had a bit about it. And during the bit I saw Michelle Marie chilling with Shelby Z. But he played the guitar and set a good mood. I thought he sounded pretty good but got just a little lost in the back round music. It was kind of overpowering his voice. Keith was wondering what was missing. Tristan McIntosh had a segment crying about possibly not being able to sing the song she wanted. Okay, giving us just a little drama. Mackenzie Borg was up next. He did Roses, an original song, and this sounded great in his voice. Naturally, he wrote it himself, and I love the passion in his voice. It was a really good choice for him to do it himself, and he nailed it. Really strong performance. Keith was surprised that it was his song and called it a lost Ed Sheeran track. Next up, Shelby Z did Alone by heart and she was working the stage and singing the hell out of this song. Let me tell you, that's all I can write. Girlfriend was on. I was like, go ahead on, girl. Saying she is out for blood. Corey Wheeler did Fix You by Coldplay. Didn't write any notes for that. James the Eighth did Wicked Game by Chris Isaac and he was very focused with a great sound and a very forward production. I remember in his auditions he was doing all kinds of little strange things with his voice, but it all tied in on this song. It wasn't like he was trying to do so many different things. The crowd liked it and so did Keith. Tristan McIntyre got to do the song. She wanted to do What Hurts the Most by Rascal Flatts. And you could tell she really felt this song like deep down somewhere. It was all in her body and her facial expressions. Her voice was soaring on it. I mean, she knew it very well, intimately. Great sound on it. Keith said it's a girl's season. Sonic Evade was up next. She did One Last Time by Ariana Grande. And she had a sweet vocal purring production on this to start out. And then she got down on the little strip in the judges' faces. I think this was the only one performance that they showed where somebody got down there and you know kind of did some nice little riffs and things little nice things were going on ended it out sweetly the judges were talking about her tone but thought she needed to work on her performance skills if you haven't already please make sure to thumb up the commentary let me know that you are watching you and enjoying it that you are here with me we are here for the final season of American Idol oh my god oh, already this is so much thank you guys for coming and thank you for your thumbs make sure to spread it around too so we all also, we, we saw some of the contestants forming friendships and stuff, and a little flirting too. And American Idol, don't you know, trying to set up a love relationship between Lee John and Sarah Stern. She said they're just friends because she's three years older than him. Lee John performed Stitches by Shawn Mendes, and he played the guitar, such a great sound in his voice. He's also so comfortable on stage and involved in the music. He had the crowd clapping, he got them clapping along with him, just like engaging everybody. Harry called him heartbreakingly cute. Then then Sarah Stern performed Somewhere Only We Know by King, and she had a good sound and walked the stage a little bit. She seemed a little reserved at first, but when she opened up and really got into the lyrics, it was a wonderful performance. Key said she had a great voice. J-Lo said she's better than that. Jen Blosa was up next. She did True Colors by Cindy Lauper, and she sounded great but made a few lyrical mistakes, so I think she flipped over a few words. I loved her sound on the song and thought it was a really great song choice for her vocals, very aware, um, but she wasn't pleased with her 
her performance. Emily Brooke did what hurts the most by Rascal Flatts and she had such a clear crisp vocal on this. Loved her emotional connection and how she went from side to side of the stage just slowly working the stage, working the audience, giving the crowd love. I really enjoyed that. Keith thought she listened too much to herself. Harry thought she had magic. Then we saw a few girls who were losing their voices. Maylee had laryngitis and was crying on camera. Mion was also crying because she was losing her voice. Maylee Delgado did stitches by Shawn Mendes and she started singing and her voice was going in and out. And girl, I feel you because I've had that mm, not often, but now I did, you know. The judges were discussing it while she was singing. She did her best and you could tell she was hurting, but and she did okay. Mion Destiny did Chains by Nick Jonas and you could hear that she was a little rough in the vocal department but her notes were all coming out and she was very confident and she was like, it looked to me like she was just getting out by force of will. She did a little better than Maylee but you could just, you could still tell that she was a little under the weather or, or her voice was about ready to go. Then the judges were making some comment about, oh you know, once it's gone it just gets worse and worse. Then Jessica Cabral came up and she did Up to the Mountain by Patty Griffin and she was strong and powerful in this performance after having her own vocal problems in group round. It was very soulful with a lot of grit and emotion. Harry said, good lord. <laughs> Next we had Joshua Wicker, he did A Thousand Years by Christina Perry, and this sounded a little forced in the short amount of time that we saw him. Oh no, he actually was also down right in front of the judges table, but it was just, for me, it was just, mm, I don't know, it was, it was too much pressure on his vocal cords that, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. Harry said there was something mournful and soulful about him. CJ Johnson did Go Your Own Way by Fleetwood Mac. Hey! Boy, you better go ahead on and sag. He was really attacking this. I mean, great push. Loved his intensity. Great voice. He had a lot of swagger. Keith really liked him. Geneve Rose Mitchell did Danny's song by Kenny Loggins, and she dropped the cello for this and really emoted the song. Very nice, even without playing. She had great rhythmic feeling and nuance. It was just too short. Harry said she's doing something he hasn't heard anyone else do. And in the pimp spot, Dalton Raffatoni did Hopelessly Devoted to You from Greece, oh my God, after Greece just played, and you know he did this before they, you know, did that, so I was like, this is right on time, very timely, and he played this just a few seconds on his guitar. At first it wasn't on, but then, you know, when he turned it up a little bit, he played a little bit on the guitar, and I think they just cut this out. We didn't see it, I'm sure he did the whole thing, but he launched it to the chorus, and it was, oh, I loved his take on it, one of my favorite musical songs. His stage movements were so spastic and frenetic, and his energy was so great, but his voice still kept that very nice, pure, kind of even smooth tone. Loved the jerky movements and all that, but still, again, the smooth tone, the smooth vocal was just riding it out. Next, the judges deliberated on who is staying and going, you know, did their little things and switched people around while the contestants were put in three rooms for the decision. So I can't say, I can't say everybody because I don't know everybody's name and stuff, but the people that I saw, Dalton Rapitoni, Mackenzie Borg, Shelby Z, and Laporte Cheryl Renee were in the first group and they went through to the next round. The second group had John Wayne Schultz in it and they went home along with Joshua Wicker. Then the last group had John the Eighth, Jen Blossel, Manny and Michelle Marie and the last group went through. Lee John and Sarah Sturm also made it through. Yay! And tomorrow night is showcase night with a live audience. Are you going to watch? Let me know down in the comments. It's a two hour show. I will see you then. This is Robert Anton, RobertAnton.com.